Okay. All right. It's part three. Guess what? We're going to do it. Mobility, mobility, mobility. Mobility, mobility. Mobility. How many centuries are there? Mobility, you guys. Mo frickin ability. Lots of these wonderful Happy Time Phoenixes helping to indicate, should we warp in up here? Or should we warp in down here? We're continuing to see the wondrous effects of this attack. So, of course, just gentle engagements. You see the Phoenixes also checking, sweeping up here to see if there's any such obnoxious swarm hostage. Now, take a look at things from the Dong Regu cam. Dong Regu sees this army down here, and he sees another army over here, and look at all these locusts going the wrong way. These guys aren't ready to cool down yet. See how these walls are just so good. Oh no. Oh, I hope, I hope, I pray that my swarm hosts will shoot stuff out in time. Hero's just getting a fantastic end to this deal. And then he warps it up in the main base anyways. Most excellent. And look at that. Just pulls right on out. He says, well, I did some damage down here. Uh, it looks like I can only do some damage over here. And, uh, well... I guess I'll just go to the main, because it seems where I can do the most damage. Dongregu amazingly has lost more resources than Hero. That's very uncommon. And you know, I do hear a lot about Tempest being the big money unit, but I do kind of like Void Rays, because this is a way of saying, I'm not going to actually try to kill the Swarm hosts. I'm going to try to kill everything else. Does he kill that too? That's so lucky. Oh my god. I want to come back and look at that. Pew! Yeah, just moving up here along the top. Doing the attack over here because he had just pulled over here and saw that there were a lot of roaches and queens up in the main. I mean, it's basically putting units where you know his units are not. Great, he just sees a bunch of stuff here get killed. So he's going to make a push attempt here. Look at that gas count. Look at that juicy gas count from Hero. Spending a lot on the minerals, warping stuff in, but I think most importantly of all, getting up these extra expansions and easily shoving dudes into gas. Checking here. No, not working. Might want to check here in a little bit, but you know what might even be the best of all? Moving down here and taking another expansion. I see nothing wrong with that. we got a Dark Shrine coming up. Because at any time, Dark Shrine. So oh, this poor embarrassed little war prism. Seeing units there might make me go, hmm, I might want to check that. But, you know, it's nothing wrong with waiting. We prefer to have it be a two-pronged attack as opposed to a sort of fortunately, uh, it seems like I can do damage type attack. Now we talked about knocking stuff down before it ever really got started. That was, I think, the biggest thing um, extraction that we did in part number one. How can we prevent swarm hosts from ever really getting started? And then we saw a quick win in game one. Now, I, 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 I gave you that in the form of a sexy win, but it was talking about swarm hosts. There's a very quiet, subtle thing going on here. A very quiet, subtle beating it down before it ever becomes an issue. Do you see it? Do you see it? What have we beaten our opponent down so much that he doesn't have a lot of? Corruptors. If we look at the composition that we're seeing out of Dong Regu, it's lots of swarm hosts because we want that. It's vipers to get value against the Colossus. But man, Dong Regu's been having a really hard time. He's been having to build roaches to deal with drops up here, to deal with attacks over here, to deal with attacks over here. It's just so hard to bounce anywhere. If Corruptors started to amass in big numbers at any point, wow, Hero probably would have just overrun with Speed Zealots and his not that Colossus heavy force that he has. So now we're starting to realize, oh, oh, that's why Void Rays are such an intelligent choice from Hero. Because it's not saying Tempests are not as good against Swarm Hosts as Void Rays are. No, it's that this attack 
exploits this mobility weakness for Dong Ray Gu. So he's struggling to stay alive, and he's not even going to have anti air. Void rays are good against no corruptors. And that's what Hero is getting ready to smickety smack down. So he's trying to sniff out a nice attack path. Okay, great. So we see everything rallied that way. We might want to consider something like that. We might want to consider something because of what we're seeing. Just a quick little move over to this left side. And surprise, baby! We're going to be taking ourselves another base. You don't need a lot of Void Rays. Void Rays are just really good. Starting to poke around. You can start to feel the tension brewing. I think Dong Ragu does not even realize that there is a huge army invading. Yeah, look at that. He's building defensive structures. He's getting infestors now. I think this is literally the, the very first moment that Dong Ragu sees that there's Void Rays at all in this. So we talked about how hallucination is really important in this spot. Hallucination, obviously, for scouting. But here, very easy. Just, hey, target these. Moving forward, absorbing a ton of damage, and just roasting through this. Doo -doo 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 -doo. More stalkers galore. Stalkers I would only really reinforce with if I was trying to break a point I was pretty sure that I was going to break. By the way, I see an awful lot of units. Might be a nice opportunity for this fellow. What a gorgeous attack. Finally getting to blink up on there. Now, I will note, one thing that you may have just briefly seen, I don't like Tempest, uh, just in general. Uh, especially not against Swarm Hosts. I think there's other situations which they can be cool. But what we're actually going to see is Hero starts Carriers. I think Carriers are a much better choice. Because basically we're saying, you know what? I Carriers are just better <laughs> against whatever anti-air you have. What, you have queens? All right, cool. Go transfuse yourself, and then after you're done transfusing, your targeting will be messed up, and you'll probably shoot down my interceptors, and that's totally fine. But he cancels them in favor of the more aggressive Void Rays. And we're starting to see that, that Void Ray switch. Well, that's actually really good. Wow, it worked because we saw no Corruptors. What well, is just charging up, just shooting down one, shooting down another one? Mm, it's very nice. Void Ray is not very good against Queens, but pretty dang good against Buildings. Yeah! Away they run. Now, while all this was going on, that drop did happen at the top side. Just wanted to show the Void Rays being awesome. Fruit. I'm just going to keep tapping my B button, because I'm a B button boy. Gosh, where is that stupid thing? There we go. Probably should have rewound this in a different way. Whoa, hey. So yeah, remember how I said, wow, I see an awful lot of units here. Roaches, locusts, Hero thought very similar things and decided to move on in. Go on, Hero. Go on. Go on, do it. Here's where the blink up, the killing of all this stuff. And then he lost focus of it. But still. Thought you'd like that gem. It's very hard to do a punchline properly when uh, you have to rewind and you have to wait and you have to reload. But uh, in retrospect, imagine if I had nailed it. Uh -huh. So, I think at this point in time, I'm super amazed to see Dong Rei Gu not way ahead of Hero. But that's just because Hero's aggression has just been very intelligently, smartly timed. And now there's this army that has almost no gateway units in it. It's like Colossus, a Void Ray. DTs are moving out. They're very mobile. Checking all the expo locations. Hero's just going to win a war of attrition. He's going to win 5 base versus 4 base. I mean, w what time does Dong Regu even have? 
to try to mass up a whole bunch of corruptors. He's going to be relying almost exclusively on queens. And here there's going to be archons. Again, reinforcing stalkers to break position. Somewhat of a norm. Just getting super aggressive. It's still the same idea of trying to hit the points. The only time that there is a central direct engagement is at this very, very last push. Every single attack has been in one of three locations. Here, here, or here. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm like not even talking about this going down to this expansion. I mean like the extreme point tip was one. The extreme point tip up here and the extreme point tip only this last final attack. And I just think it really goes to show how Hero was not really focused on composition. He wasn't trying to do amazing things with, you know, a, a, a Tempest, seven Colossus, nine High Templar, because he just was avoiding it, avoiding it, avoiding it, and stayed supremely attack-focused the whole game long. <laughs> Let's take questions while I put on this jacket. This jacket has a nice tint of green that will make me transparent. <laughs> okay. Whew. Ah, Drodo says day nine. Did Dongu make a mistake by failing to scout the void rays, or did Hero just have that good t good of timing? Yeah, uh, it was almost certainly a timing thing because like, um, it it's kind of hard to like think. Oh damn, I overcommitted hard to void rays. Increasingly what Zergs are doing is they're just getting um, more queens as an answer. Because Corruptors, um, they're just so expensive and they're like, okay, queens are more efficient um, uh, against them. But queens take just an eternity to build. They're just so slow to, to rack up. So it was just a very nice timing thing. It, it's not timing in terms of the, I'm going to wait and I'm going to sit and I'm going to hang out. And I'm going to hit you right before you get the stuff. I'd call it more that Hero was pressuring so hard that Dong Regu never had an opportunity to get a, an appropriate answer. I would credit not the timing of the switch, but all the attacking beforehand as why he was able to do that switch. EN3221 says Day9 wasn't DRG's opening risky with the three base against Gateway opening. Uh, weirdly, like, not really. It's it's pretty hard to stop a three um, hatch opening if you go Gateway first. Um, I mean, you, let's assume that you went for a really fast warp gate. I'll actually pull back to this moment in time. Let's come to... 530. If you go for a really fast, let's say, 4 warp gate. Dong Regu. If you go for a very fast 4 warp gate, it's going to be striking. Uh, for one, Dong Regu is going to be able to see that you're 4 gating. Because we can uh, reveal that the overlords have spotted everything. But two, and more importantly, the queens are going to be out. And Dong Regu can just flood slow zerglings. His speed is actually coming up just in case there is some sort of 4 warp gate. The warp in for the 4 warp gate would be happening right about now. And we see that Dong Regu would have two queens at this front. He would have lots of lings en route. And there would be about to uh, pop off a big roundo uh, lings. So, I mean, it's actually virtually impossible to win with um, a gateway push. Also... Uh, the other threat that is real is if a one gateway person spots you going for triple hatch and then just goes forge, chrono boost, zealot, can rush. You can almost always kill a hatch that way. Ah, oh, Calamity Foxes. Dan, I've never played StarCraft before and would like to start soon. And I'm a big fan of very defensive play. Who would you suggest starting with? Ooh! Ooh! Mm. 
Probably not Terran. Terran is a very attacky type of um, attacky type of person. I would probably say Protoss. Probably. Uh, if you're so Terran's just very attack oriented. Uh, Zerg, you kind of have to do some active things with your fast units. Um, using Mutalist to poke or Zerglings to sort of scout around. If you like to play where you're just sitting in your base, getting stuff up, trying to make sure that all your flanks are covered, and preparing a big army to do a big attack, probably Protoss uh, is the big one. Um, now, technically, according to narrative, Terran should be the most defensive race because they have bunkers and they're about big efficient units and stuff like that but you know you really are focusing more on the biological units like marine and medevac which requires just really attack oriented play uh th that's to play like at the really high levels all the races are great defensively if you just want to play defensively and work your way up to master pretty much any style if you just execute it well you can get to master league no problem I shouldn't say no problem. You can get to Master League. It's really, really hard to play properly, which is why this is an extremely deep game. But um, you can do it no problem. Oh, great question from Tang Takumsa. Is Swarmos a good choice on heavy rain? With the wide flank paths focusing on counterattacks in this map, uh, it seems actually very similar to the counterattack that we saw Jadong do earlier on this week. I would say it's sort of... It's up for debate, because why would you say that Swarm Hosts are good on this map? Because you it's a line, right? Everything's a line. So like, here if I have Swarm Hosts, the Locusts just move in a line. And then I can move my Swarm Hosts here and advance in a line. I never have to worry about being in like you know a big open space where you need it might have swarm host doing this and then all of a sudden units come from above and below. Nothing like that will ever happen. Um, if you're against an, like a world class player like Hero, I think you're going to struggle. But yeah, um, I, uh, it's really hard. It's really hard. I'm trying to think of. I mean, maybe if Dong Rei Gu got himself up more bases earlier and pressured and kept Hero back and then went Swarm Host, it would be good and he'd have enough resources to, like, slam down defensive structures. But I think that going for three base straight Swarm Host, Hero just played beautifully. I think, yeah, I think it was probably the, the three base that was the easiest. Uh, or or the, the, the key explanation. Let's take two more questions. <laughs> From Neb 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 Neb. Is Frost a good map for Zerg players to go Swarm Host? Hell no. Way, way too much space. You can't cover any space. It is so easy to counterattack on that map. You would just get wrecked. You would get wrecked. Uh, I'm looking for the best possible question. Hmm. Hmm. Wraith Dagger Twelve asks from the opposing side: If if not Swarm Host, then what options does Zerg have to deal with late game Protoss? I'll tell you what, because I played Zerg in Brood War. I believe in the true spirit of Zerg. Massive swarms of units. More economy, more bases, inefficiency. Doesn't matter, you have too much stuff. How would you deal with the late game? I'll tell you how. You expand a lot, you counterattack a lot, and right when he thinks he's got you, tech switch. Boom! 50 mutalisks. And right when he's done dealing with 50 mutalisks, boom! Ultra Ling. Blah, vomiting right on his face. That's what I'm talking about. That's the spirit of the dong that lives within. And you're like, but what about Brood Lords? Is it not a good unit? No, it's not Zerg. I'm not talking about goodness or badness. I'm talking about Zergness. 
Pull the brood lord out. Pull the swarm host out. And give me some fast units. Give me some scourge. Give me scourge and defilers. We'll call it a day. That's what I want. That's what I'm thinking about. Let's go listen to some music and close it out. I'll see you tomorrow. By the way, I'm going to play Roller Coaster Tycoon tomorrow. Which version should I play? Just type the number one, two, three, four in chat, whatever, what have you. Five, six, seven, eight.